Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Hey, Mr. Templer. Yes, Louie? Starting to rain. So it is. You couldn't get a dinner back in town. You had to travel all the way out of here in the country to eat. Louie, I was invited to a dinner party, and Long Island is hardly the country. It's full of trees, ain't it? Uh, true. This does happen to be a rather lonely spot, but... The rain is getting heavier, too. I should have stood in Brooklyn. Oh, I'm sorry, Louie. What is a cabbie from Brooklyn doing out here in the middle of nature? Well, he seems to be driving a cab. I... Hey, uh, Louie. Yeah? Is it possible that the roof of your cab leaks? <laughs> it's possible. It's leaking. On you? On me. Well, after all, Mr. Temple, according to the chemistry books, we're composed of 98% water anyway. Perhaps. I find the percentage high enough without any additions, however. <laughs> There's no extra charge. <laughs> We've got... Hey, Mr. Temple, the motor. Uh, it stopped. Yeah, so I notice. Discouragement? No, it's possible the hood leaks, too. Oh, that's nice. No, don't blame the motor. After all, it ain't composed 98% water. It shortly will be. <laughs> While we sit here and calmly contract pneumonia. Who's calm? Look, Mr. Temple, you know something? This could be the beginning of like a real horror story. It's the nighttime where two guys stuck out here in the wilderness. Long Island. The rain is raining, the thunder is thundering, and I'm scared. You know what ought to happen next? If this was a horror story... <laughs> That's what ought to happen next. It did. Oh, mm. mm. sound came from the left through those trees. Yeah. Mm. Oh, hey, I see lights. It must be a house. Doesn't seem very far away. But that's where the dog yelled from, huh? Yes, except that judging from the sound, the dog was outside. That's strange. Why would a dog be out in this downpour? Maybe he read a book on chemistry. Or maybe he's just leading the dog's life. <laughs> that was a joke, I think. Yeah. And I may laugh later at this moment. There's someone running down the road. Yeah, from the direction of the house. Look, he's heading for us. I hope you don't mind, but can you give me a lift back to Glenville? Oh, we'd be glad to, except that we're stuck here ourselves. However, you can join us inside. It's slightly less damp. Thanks. But I won't stay long. I don't care for the neighborhood. Yeah, how did you get here? I'm a cab driver. Well, where's your cab? Back there. That house? Yeah. The Hawthorne place. Well, why didn't you take your cab when you left? Because I was in a hurry. Because there was things closer to the cab than I was. What kind of things? Listen, young man. Nobody lives in the Hawthorne house. Nobody's lived there for over a hundred years. So tonight, back in town, I picked up a fare, and where does he want to go? The Hawthorne house. I'm an old fool, so I take him there. He gets out of the house, tells me to wait, goes inside. Well, I walk around to stretch my legs. Then I notice the house is all lit up. I think that's mighty queer. But I figure maybe somebody new bought the place. Well, perhaps someone did. No, because I go around to the side, and I look into the house through the big front window, and I see who's in the house. It ain't anybody new. Well, who was it? It was the folks who used to live in that house a hundred years ago. Huh? And what was worse, they were sitting around a table... Eating dinner. Oh, I see. You say they were the people who lived there a hundred years ago. Well, how could you know that? Because of the way they was dressed. Because of the way they looked. Mister, I've lived in Glenville all my life. And there's pictures of the Hawthorns going way back in the Glenville Town Hall. Well, perhaps the people you saw were descendants of the original Hawthorns. Sure, sure. Except nobody dresses that way anymore. Except that one of them was bleeding onto the tablecloth with his throat cut open, and another was putting food into his mouth, only he didn't have a face around that mouth. <laughs> Look, you're uh, positive you didn't imagine... All right, I imagined it. I'm crazy. Think whatever you like. But me, I'm getting out of here. So long. Hey. Let's us get out of here, too, Louie. Hmm? Oh, that's swell with me. Are we going to walk to Glenville? No, I'd like to take a look at that house. Why? 
Well, we may still be in time for dinner. Mr. Templer, I ain't hungry. And besides, that guy might still maybe be bleeding. I doubt it. You do, huh? Why? You're forgetting we're 98% water, aren't you? Oh, that answer's supposed to cheer me up. It's the dog I'm worrying about, Louie. Why? Well, out here, a dog would be kept for companionship, protection. Therefore, why was that dog put out in the rain? I'd just as soon forget the dog. <coughs> Ooh, somebody is busy not paying attention to me. Oh, hey, that's the house, huh? Yeah, obviously. Colonial architecture, large, rather pretty. Huh. Brilliantly lit. With colonial electricity? Candles, Louie. Uh-huh. You can see them through that large window. Chandeliers ablaze with candles. I can't see anything else except the ceiling. Well, that must be the dining room. Yeah, probably. Mr. Templer, is all this real? It seems to be. Huh. Hey, a uh, bell pull on the door, huh? Mm. Ah, ah, ooh, ah, the dog don't like our ring in the bell. Ah, look, Mr. Templer, look. Ah, an elephant ah, with teeth. Yeah, it's a large dog. It's drenched. Look out for your hand. You could ah, easily swallow it. it Oh, look, now he's heading for me. Ah. Mr. Templer, did I have to come all the way out here to feed a dog? Oh, don't be silly, Louie. He likes you. He's looking up at yeah, you. Yeah, trying to decide which part to start Mr. on. Louie, there's positively a light in his eyes. For all you know, you may be his ideal. Yeah, sure, his ideal dog food. Oh, get down. Mr. Templer, leave us go inside, huh? No one answered the bell. I wonder. Oh, it's open. Hey, look, the pooch. He's leaving. That's strange. He sounds terrified. But of what? I didn't say a thing. Huh. Hallway seems empty. Let's go in. Uh. Oh. Kind of quiet. Yeah. Not even a chain clanking, not even a creaking. Hey, Louis, there. What? There's a door down the hallway. It's uh, probably the dining room. No, I ain't hungry. The house is old, dusty, unused. But there is a light. Yeah, maybe they forgot to turn the gas off when they all died or something. Uh-huh. It's the dining room. I ought to run out and buy some oil for the door. Large table in the center. Chairs all around. White linen and polished silver on the table. The plus dishes with food. Yeah. And food that's warm, Louie. Look, Mr. Templer, I don't like this. A house in which nobody's lived for a hundred years, miles from anywhere, all lit up with candles in the middle of the night, a table with fresh-cooked food on it, and there's no one, no one at all at the table. Unless, um... Unless we can't see them, Louie. Found a lot of cobwebs, Mr. Templin, a lot of empty rooms, but nothing living. No. May as well head back to the dining room. Don't let your appetite tempt you. Probably by now all the food has vanished. Hey, listen to that sound. Yeah. Like dishes rattling? Yeah. Come on. Maybe maybe the guests all, all came back. They were in the house. It would mean they'd all have to rush out into the rain, but why? If they were thirsty, maybe. I don't know. What? The door's ajar. Shh. Perhaps we can look in without being seen. Yeah. Hey. I don't believe it. A butler. An old guy dressed in clothes that belong in a museum. Look at, he's got knee pants on with lace cuffs. And at that table, where there's no one seated, he's serving dinner. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's just practicing. For what? I heard of ghost writers. Maybe he's a ghost butler. <laughs> Suppose we go in and find out, huh? Yeah. Uh, good evening. Be still, if you please, be still. I was afraid we might disturb the guests. He's gathering some of the dishes. Going to the swinging door. Probably leads to the pantry. Look, he's waving on us. Should we wave back? No, he wants us to join him. Mm-hmm. Come along. Uh-huh. Serving pantry. I, uh, beg your pardon. Indeed you should. But uh, you are... Horton. Horton's the name, of course. But the footman must have told you that. The footman? Uh, Caleb, he let you in, didn't he? Shouldn't have directed you to the dining room, of course. But then he's getting old. You'd better go to your quarters at once. There, behind the main staircase. Glad you came along. We need you. Caleb isn't the man he used to be. But then he's been with the Hawthorns for so many years. 
I remember when he entered service. You do? It was the year old Boney got his toes toasted at Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> old Boney? <laughs> Can't stand around gossiping all evening. Guests might notice. Uh, get to your quarters, man. I've work to do. Hey. Look, he ducked out. Yeah. The door's locked. Probably a spring latch, which means we may as well go back to the dining room. Hmm? Look, you know, something's wrong with this whole thing. It, it, Mr. Templer, who is old Boney? Huh? Oh, that happens to be the nickname the English had for Napoleon, Louis. Oh, fine. So Horton says he remembers the year old Boney got his toes toasted at Moscow. Look, my brother-in-law, Joey, you know, happens to be a very educated man. College man? No, no, graduated from the United States Army. Okay. He's now a mechanical-type engineer. Look, anyway, once he told me Napoleon was in Moscow in 1812. Yes, your brother-in-law was correct. But, Mr. Temple, that would make this guy Horton over, uh, over 150 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid it would. A guy over 150 years old is dead. So what's Horton doing walking around, huh? Well, he may have been too busy to lie down and die. That does not put a twinkle in my eye. Look, Mr. Temple, I want to go home. Louis, there's a what? pattern here of some kind. A pattern for horror. And if that pattern is to mean anything, I... Hey, Louis. Huh? That closet there. Yeah, it's a closet. Yeah. Yeah, suppose we open it. Look, I, I don't like to mention this, but in all old families, you know what they keep in closets? They keep skeleton in closets. Mm. Stemple, uh, he, he, he... It fell down. Yeah. No skeleton, however. That I can see for myself. Fortunate thing on the whole. Why, what's fortunate about it? Well, with a skeleton, you could never tell whether or not its throat had been cut. His throat has been cut? Yeah, thoroughly. Let's go take a trip someplace. Let's Louis, go... Louis, what? Haven't you realized something else? I don't think I want to. This man here is dressed just as we are, not in the costume of a dead age. Well, it didn't help him any. Oh, you found something? Yeah. Long brown hairs clinging to his clothes and... Uh-huh. Various papers. Yeah. In life, Louis, his name was Charles Gray. He was a lawyer. Oh, the Bar Association ain't gonna like this. There's something else. What? He was carrying this document, Louis. Yeah, what is it? A copy of the last will of one Samuel Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Him we didn't meet yet. No. No, lots of closets we haven't opened yet, either. Yeah, we're not going to if I can help it. Well, what does the will say? And you better read fast because all them candles, you know, are beginning to give up. Uh, I, Samuel Hawthorne, being sound of mind and body, do hereby make this my last will and testament. Hmm. It is my desire that all my heirs in time to come, in order to inherit my vast fortunes, must at least once a year open Hawthorne House and there give a ceremonial dinner to the neighboring gentry. In costume? Yeah. Uh-huh. At this dinner, everyone present must wear clothing of my time. Uh-huh, yeah. My heirs must be of high moral repute and avoid divorces. <laughs> Obviously, the dead man here, Mr. Charles Gray, was the lawyer in charge of the estate and presumably came here to make sure the terms of the will were met. Okay, so now we know the ghosts weren't really ghosts. Yeah, but what? We haven't seen any of them. It's true. Nor any neighboring gentry. However, that stipulation was probably way... Yeah, look, to... Mr. Templer, you know, we, we better maybe get the police. Yeah, there aren't any phones around here, Louie. Couldn't we walk to Glenville? No, Louie, I, I think we're here for the night. Oh, fine, fine. Fits right in with that pattern for horror you mentioned. Oh, all I personally need right now is for someone to scream, good and loud. And... <laughs> Mr. Templer, this makes the second time we've searched the house and found nothing. That was a woman screaming, Louis. Maybe it was a ghost. Ghosts then. aren't supposed to scream, they clank chains. Yeah, maybe this here ghost didn't know that. What, back to the dining room? Yeah, I suppose. Only room in the house with light. Is that good? Maybe the corpse took a walk. Or... No. Still here. Yeah, and still dead. Ah, fellas. You having fun? Dressed up like Napoleon, too. Look, he ain't walking very straight. I hate to say I'm inquisitive, but, uh... Oh, Mr. Gray. His throat's in a bad way, isn't it? <laughs> it's not especially normal. 
Uh, I'm Simon Templer. And you? James Hawthorne, sir. Besides housebreaking, your occupation is what? Hey, you're the saint, aren't you? Yes, I am. Oh. Isn't the slitting of larynxes rather an odd occupation for the saint? Well, it would be if I'd cut Mr. Gray's throat. However, um, you're uh, Samuel Hawthorne's heir? Yeah, the current one, yes. Uh, You've been snooping. But there was a clause in the will about divorce. You've been overdoing that snooping. You're married, Mr. Hawthorne? Sorry. It would have helped supply a motive, I suppose, but I'm not, nor have I ever been, fortunate or unfortunate enough to be married. A woman screamed a few moments ago. Uh, who was she? I did not hear. But you couldn't have failed to if you were in the house. But I wasn't. But you must have been. It's been raining out. Your clothes are dry and spotless. Well, to be honest, I wasn't in the house, and yet I was. You searched the house, I presume? Yes, yes. You overlooked the cellar. I didn't find one. It's a tricky place to get to. The entrance is behind the chimney in the parlor. There's something to do with colonial politics, perhaps. At any rate, I was down there. You're fond of cellars? I were. When they were equipped with bottles and bottles and bottles of Napoleon brandy, yes. <laughs> uh, now, if you don't mind, I'll sit down. I have another few hours to remain in costume and here in order to comply with the terms of the will. I'm sleepy. I shall, therefore... Uh, That's polite. It's more probably brandy. So what do we do? Sit here and listen to him snore? Mm-hmm. Napoleon keeps cropping up all the time. Mm. Louis, mm-hmm. suppose we go downstairs and have a look at his bottle. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Oh, some staircase down to the cellar. Yeah, it's very narrow. My shoulders keep rubbing against the wall. And a dirty wall, too. Hey, look, the cellar's all lit up. Oh. Candles on barrels. Hey, and lots of barrels, not to mention kegs and casks and everything. Hands up! Yeah, the casks and blondes and... I said hands up! With 42 caliber revolvers. 42? You didn't expect me to be armed, did you? I'm afraid we didn't expect you at all, Miss... Naturally you would say that. But this isn't going to work out the way you thought. I'm afraid I haven't had any thoughts recently. <laughs> Look, Mr. Temple, she's running up the stairs. Yes. Yeah. Hey. She bolted the door behind her. Oh, Mr. Templer, that was a very solid type of door leading to the cellar. And the cellar is about six miles underneath the ground, and we're locked in. Oh, don't worry, Louis. We'll be released in time. In time for what? A funeral? That girl was beautiful, Louis. She's on the other side of a locked door, so what good is it do you, huh? I can worry. Oh, this is an occupation for a grown man. Worry about what? The part she's playing in this entire mask. Mr. Templer! Yeah, those were shots. Did they answer your question? Hardly. We don't know who shot at whom. The girl had a revolver. Yeah, so she had. Still locked? Yeah, still locked. Uh, don't bother, Louis. Yeah. No one will answer. Oh. May as well go down again and make ourselves comfortable. Yeah. For how long? 20 years? Oh, don't be silly, Louis. You got an optimistic thought? We'd never last 20 years down here. You know something, Mr. Templer? Hmm? I'm beginning to feel aged in the wood. <laughs> you better restrain yourself. Hmm. We've only been down here half an hour, perhaps. Hmm. Hey, hey, the Marines have landed. Yeah. Now, let's get another bottle. Let's get another bottle. Oh, definitely an amphibious Good operation. Good for the... Ca- oh, Mr. Templer. Tripling, huh? Well, not exactly. Ah, very naughty of you. Don't mind admitting that's why I'm here myself. Need another bottle of brandy. Don't know what happened to that one upstairs. It, it's all empty. Must have evaporated, huh? Oh, perhaps those shots frightened it out of the bottle. Oh, you had them, too. Yeah. I had them myself, you know. Matter of fact, I'm violating no confidence when I tell you those shots were fired at me. Whoever shot at you couldn't have had very good aim. Fortunately for me, no. Carl, dear cousin Carl, happens to be, and I permit myself to be vulgar, a lousy marksman. Or or should I say markswoman? Carla being blonde and beautiful. Oh, you married. She's next in line for Samuel Hawthorne's pretty little fortune, you know. If I should happen to be disqualified or dead. Well, you have your bottle. Suppose we go upstairs, hmm? An idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bottle staircase. Plaster walls. Absorbed from one's shoulders, eh? Huh? 
I rub it off, hey, there. Yeah, back in the pot. Mr. Temple, you have a reputation for these things. Who cut Mr. Gray's throat? A murderer. Oh, very pretty, would sir. But, uh, but why? It was Mr. Gray's task to see to it that the provisions of the will were observed. His death, therefore, must have had something to do with that. You're a bachelor? Indeed I am. Was he? No. A pretty little wife. Oh, oh she'll be desolate. As a matter of fact, really thinking about her grief makes me desolate. Uh -huh. Therefore, touching this bottle, and I hope you won't think me uh, too terribly selfish, I shall toddle off to Betty by a dusty bed, perhaps, but it's almost morning. Uh, hey, good night, John. Him, I am very glad to see go. But how about us? Now we go for the police, Louie, if your cab will start. However, Carla... Oh, let's not look for her, huh, Mr. Templer? A girl with all those calibers don't appeal to me. Oh, you're being narrow-minded, Louie. After all those shots, how many calibers can she have left? wet out, it's cold, it's dark, but do I mind? No. Out here, at least, no ghosts. No corpses, neither. Louis. What? Look. Oh, the other cab. Let's have a look, Louis. Hmm. Oh, I didn't like that. Hmm. Should I take a look, too? You might as well. Okay. I'll take... Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the frightened cab driver, Mr. Temple. Yes, except that nothing will frighten him anymore. Mr. Temple, this here's not a healthy neighborhood for throats. His has been cut, too. Yes, yeah, same technique is used on Gray. Louis, we've got to get back to the house. You don't like our throats the way they are? Come along, Louis. There's no time to go to Glenville. There's lots of time. In which a murderer may kill again. Oh, let's change a few subjects, huh? Very well. Yeah, I've got three questions, Louis. Why did the cab driver, whose body we've just seen, lie to us? Why did Carla think she was in danger from us? And can a bachelor be divorced? The answer to the last one, I know. He can't. Right. Uh -huh. Therefore, we know who the murderer is, don't we? <laughs> Ooh. Hey, that dog. Yeah, we know about him, too, don't what we? What do we know about him? You remember I mentioned the long brown hairs clinging to Gray's clothes? Yeah. Well, those hairs must have come from the dog we saw. The dog, therefore, belonged to Gray. Oh, uh -huh. hey, Mr. Templer, uh -huh. down the hall in that alcove? Yeah, if I move quickly. Oh, no, let go of me. Hello, Carla. Going to run away? Uh, no, but I won't let go of the oh, gun. Yes, you will. It's much too heavy for you. Uh, ow. Now, just come along with us. All right. If you don't try anything. I won't, except for catching a killer. A killer? But what... Mm, we want the dining room. Well, everybody back so soon? Nearly everyone, Mr. Hawthorne. Oh, I'm glad you got Carla's gun, Mr. Templer. She might not miss me again. We don't know that it was she who shot at you, do we, Carla? Why? Uh... It would be easy to discover if this gun has been fired recently. Well, maybe I did shoot at him, but I... There's something else that should come first... Charles Gray was murdered in this house earlier tonight. Why? Both you, Mr. Hawthorne, and Carla covered a fortune. That's why you're both here. Yeah, Mr. Temple. Louis, all Mr. Hawthorne had to do was spend the night here in appropriate costume and also refrain from appearing in a divorce case. A bachelor can appear in a divorce case, can't he, Mr. Hawthorne? Mm. You found the papers for the divorce suit on Gray. Maybe me as correspondent, eh? He was always so touchy about his wife. I didn't find them. Doesn't matter, however. I knew they or something like them had to exist. On the other hand, if Horton, the ghost butler we found serving dinner earlier this evening, is really insane... You're trying to pin the murder on him? He left the house in time to have committed it. Yeah, there's usually a motive, you know. Mr. Hawthorne, which murder are you talking about? I, uh, uh Gray's murder, naturally. No, because Horton wouldn't have had to leave the house to kill him. Gray was murdered in this room. But you accepted my statement about having to leave the house to murder. 
We're both talking about the cab driver's murder, aren't we? What cab driver? The one who brought Gray here, the one who saw Gray murdered, the one who fled and then thought things over and decided to return for a little exercise in blackmail. Uh, Mr. Temple, you said he lied to us, but what about? You remember, Louis, he told us he'd looked into the dining room through the front window and had seen the ghosts at dinner? Uh Do you also remember, however, that when we got to the house... Yeah, we looked in the front window, too. Yes. Yeah, and all we could see through it was the chandeliers in the ceiling. I said so myself. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. The cabbie lied. And died for it. Look, I haven't been outside the house all evening. You must have been. You claimed you were in the cellar when we first met. That's why you didn't hear Carla scream. But the cellar stairway is narrow. It's impossible to avoid getting plaster on your shoulders. Plaster that can't be rubbed off. And yet when we first met, I remarked that your clothes were spotless. They should have been wet. Nonsense. You'd had time to change from your ordinary clothes. You didn't think of rubbing plaster on the costume, however. (laughs) Too bad. You might then have applied to the scarlet of murder a coat of whitewash. I was hiding in the cellar because James had threatened me. You see, I knew Mr. Gray was going to sue his wife for a divorce and name James. Mm, And if he did, you would inherit all the Hawthorne money. Yes. I was terrified that he would kill me. I see. Tell me about Horton, Carla. Poor Horton has been hired every year for the occasion. He's very, very old. Now tell me about you, Simon. (laughs) Well, I... Mr. Templer, I don't mean to interrupt you and Miss Carla, but it's... Uh, Louie, you don't have the ghost of a chance. have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. This script of The Saint was written by Louis Vitties. In the cast, you heard Adrian Martin as Carla and Edmund McDonald as James. Tudor Owen was the butler. Fred Shields, the cab driver. Louis is played by Larry Dodkin. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. Your announcer, Don Stanley. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Whether it's comedy, music, or drama you're after, you'll find it on the big show today. And today also means a one-hour adaptation of F. Scott Fitzgerald's exciting novel, This Side of Paradise, presented by Theatre Guild on the Air and starring Richard Widmark and Nina Foch. April is Cancer Control Month. Guard your family against cancer by joining the 1951 Cancer Crusade. Mail your generous contribution to cancer, care of your local post office. Hear the cast of Green Pastures today on NBC.